Beverly Hills. Hey, I'm Jason Diamond and I'm a face specialist. I, I specialize in everything from the neck and above. Bill came to me because he wanted to improve the appearance of his aging face. I was reading Vogue magazine and I came across this article about Dr. Diamond. It didn't look like something had been done. They looked like themselves, but very refreshed. It's not that cartoon look. Bill's a, he's a, a rock legend. He's been you know, in the band Chicago for I think, 25 years. And aside from that, he's written half the songs on the radio that we hear every day. Well, I'm not all that well known, but I've played music uh, professionally since I was uh, 14. Bill wrote or sang or composed or did something. Uh, he's, he's a very, very uh, famous guy in the industry. I kind of learned early on, it's just you just do music all the time, you know, whether you're getting paid or not. <laughs> My eyes are drooping so far that it's really affecting my, uh, affecting my eyesight. And then Dr. Diamond mentions, hey, we should do some other stuff. My forehead's all wrinkled. And then I can deal with this too while we're at it. In my practice, I require every single person gets a preoperative clearance. Not every surgeon does that. That's not the law. You don't have to do that. When we were going to get clearance for this surgery, we found out that I had some heart problems. Bill having his preoperative clearance was a blessing in disguise because it turned out Bill had an irregular heart rhythm and it required a pacemaker. Potentially, that preoperative clearance could have saved his life. You had an electrical problem. We fixed it. You know, it's like calling an electrician. That's what a pacemaker does. Time. Do you have a second? Do you have one minute? Is everything all right? Yeah, everything is okay. I know. Why do I need to spend fifty more thousand dollars? It's probably closer to sixty. I don't even know what to do with myself. Bill's a great candidate um, because I can give him a nice natural look. I don't think I'm going to fool anybody into thinking I'm 20 years old. That's not what I'm looking to do. I just have the techniques at my disposal to be able to give him the results that he wants. Let's get a move on. Let's get this going. Hey, Bill, how are you feeling, huh? I seem to have a cold somehow. Really? Well, last night it didn't seem to be that bad. I started really thinking about it when, you, when you're talking about having to go down. A little over two weeks, and I, I got a pacemaker and a cold. We're going to be doing a long surgery, and you add to the fact that he's had a pacemaker place recently, add a cough. Now you've started to pile on some risks. This is elective surgery. Patient safety is our number one priority. More important than even getting a good result is not to hurt somebody. I think, you know, the best thing for him would be wait till he has recuperated. Okay, so I'm going to go tell him we're going to cancel his surgery. We're going to exactly. let him recover from his cough, and we'll do it as soon as he's 100% healthy. Bill, so we talked it over and we think that it's probably safest to let this cough clear up. The time afterwards, you need three couple, weeks before you get weeks. on stage. Are you guys cool to hang on that long? There's no other option, yeah. When you cancel a surgery, it throws a wrench in many different people's schedules. Now everybody's got a free day where they're not working, but you know what? We will make that decision every single time. I'm Angela, I'm 31, and I've come to Dr. Sands to get the perfect smile. Hi, Angela. Hi. I'm Dr. Kevin Sands. Nice to meet you. Hey, good morning. You're back. I'm back. You're back. <laughs> yeah. All right, so it's been it's been six weeks. Yeah. You feeling better? I was feeling, I was feeling better six days afterwards. The doctor gave me some pills about the size of a small Volkswagen. <laughs> <laughs> and getting him down was the hardest part of the whole thing. I mean, three days I was I was clean as a whistle. Bill looks a lot better. He sounds a lot better. He looks healthier. So so now's the right time. Six weeks ago it was not the right time. <laughs> I want this to be your focal point because I'm going to mark your eyelids. They're the ones that are really for me. All the other marks I'm going to make are more for you. I'm marking your eyelid creases. This is where the eyelid folds. So there will be an invisible scar. You won't be able to see anything. I'm going to take my time and be perfectly precise. And every little area is going to be very subtle. But together it will come together to be a nice, natural, masculine rejuvenation. Good. First thing I'm going to do, Bill, is I'm going to liposuction just a little bit of fat out of your abdomen. And we're going to use that fat to fill in some of the hollowness. So right. just above these dotted lines, right, right above here, I'll put a little bit of that fat into these deep creases as well, here and here. All right. Let this guy do his thing. <laughs> I'll see you back there in a few minutes.
think this is a very difficult procedure because of his age and his previous smoking and his previous health history. It's difficult. He's got very difficult anatomy that requires a lot of work. He doesn't have a whole lot of fat, so I gotta be really superficial here. I gotta tell you, all I feel is intra-abdominal stuff from his hernia. I don't even think I'm gonna do the fat. No, forget it, we're not doing the fat. If I get concerned at all about safety as health, I will put something off for later. We are not gonna put him at risk. He's got some, some damaged skin, he really does. This will take every bit of experience and skill and talent that I have today. Jack, if at any point you are concerned about something with him, let me know. I'm injecting some local. As precise as you have to be with women, you have to be even more precise with men because they don't have hair to hide these scars. So these have to be perfectly done. And these incisions are hidden well behind the hairline and they're very, very small. His barber will never even know they're there. Separator, please. This is in contrast to the older technique where we make a big cut from ear to ear. So now this is the treacherous part. I'm lifting the underlying muscle off of the windpipe and there's a lot of blood vessels and so I have to be very, very careful. Because he has a pacemaker, I have to do things differently on. I have to use different instrumentation than I normally use because the normal cautery system can fry the circuit of his pacemaker. On. Okay, Jack. Jack. On. On, on, on. 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 Is it going? Jack, can you help, please? Jack, come do this, please. Just, just take care of everything, please. Ginny, did that patient pay her balance? I've been meaning to talk to you. She can't pay it. Everything seemed great. She had no problem with the money then. I put it through and it bounced. But it doesn't have to be so complicated. Okay. I look forward. Okay, you're the best. I'll Thank see you. you soon. Bye. But the real money is going to be uh, this right, and the neck and jaw no. for sure. This is a very difficult case. This is a long procedure. There's a big scar on the outside of his skin. You can kind of make out that skin has been damaged, which means it's going to be stuck right underneath it. So it's got to be very delicate because I could easily poke through it if I don't take my time. I need to move through it because I don't want him to be asleep for too long. So I've got to balance how quickly I move through it and how precise and meticulous I am. There's nothing mini about this procedure. Now we're going to be watching it up on camera. So I'm basically releasing all the ligaments that tether the brow down. This little spaghetti thing that my instrument is on, that is a nerve. One goes like this, one goes like that, and one goes there, okay? Those are very important structures. You see how delicate they are? They're like little pieces of spaghetti right there. I'm kind of pushing on them from the outside. If you damage those, it'll cause the patient a lot of pain and numbness. It's why it's very important to know this anatomy. This is the only thing I'm gonna to do today. When I have a surgery like this, this is it. Now before I freed it up, I can only bring the brows up so much. So I freed them all up, which allows me to move this up in an easier way. As long as it takes, I'm gonna spend the time and be as meticulous as I can. Let's see if we can liposuction a little bit of fat. We'll just see if there's anything in here. Doing it this way, where I have it hooked up to a little syringe rather than a suction machine, I can control to the CC how much I take out. So we have an excellent contour to his neck and jawline. I'm very pleased. The incisions look beautiful. His brows look even and symmetric and very nice. The eyelids look great. So I'm very pleased. Now we just have to hope he heals well. That's it, guys. All right, thank you, everybody. Well, I'm kind of swollen, but that's that's sort of part and parcel of what goes on with this thing. This is a great result, and this is how it's supposed to go. I've just noticed that I actually have green eyes. You be good, and call me if you need me, otherwise I'll see you in a, in a we'll few days. We'll see you. Thanks, okay. buddy. Okay, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Hey, gorgeous. Hi. Look at you. Are Wait, you ready for the big I'm day? I'm so stressed out. Can we please? Why are you stressed? Because I have fake teeth in my mouth right now, and I want to eat real food that crunches. You are going to be back in action in the next hour. It's going to feel like you were born with these teeth. Okay. You have nothing to stress about, other than how much hotter you're going to look. Please make me hotter. Yes. Okay. We, but trust me, you know. You, listen, this is this is going to be like the best day of your life. My stress level is at a all-time high. I need to know what these teeth are going to look like. When you wake up tomorrow, you're going to be pinching yourself and calling me and thanking me. Okay. Is this the worst decision of my life, or is it the best? Get this going, please. I'm ready. I'm ready for the new teeth. Can he just... Hey, there he is. Bill, how are you, man? I'm good, man. You look amazing. Yeah. 
Let's take that off and look at everything. Yeah, Bill, that is great. A little swollen here, that's to be expected, but yeah. that looks fantastic. For two weeks out, I mean, look, you can go put So now in. I can go back into the ring. Let's avoid that. Why don't <laughs> Let's we, leave that one alone. I've, Stick to I've the... avoided it this far. I'm going to keep avoiding it. This is exactly what I had in mind for you. You're doing perfectly. Let's look at some photos. So, Bill, look at these before and afters. Whoa. Here's before, here's after. So here we've got the brow beforehand and the forehead looks severe. Here it's just nice and relaxed. So if you compare this to this, it's all perfect. Boy, it's before and after. It's definitely grandpa and the kid, you know? I mean, it's quite a big, quite a giant difference. Look down here, look at this big neck band that you had. That's all gone. You just have a nice sculpted jawline now, in a natural yeah. way. <laughs> yeah, you're just un unbelievably good work, man. Thank you so much. No, it's my pleasure. Great to see you, Bill. Thanks, Congratulations. Guys.